Many people believe that if you want to build muscle, you need to bulk and eat as much food as possible in order to become Lord Swaldemort. And on the other side, in order to lose fat, you need to cut out all the good stuff in your life just to become Mr. Shreddy Kruger. But unfortunately, this is just not true. And the more people I train, the more I realize most people don't need to bulk or cut. And that's where you have body recomposition, known as recomp. Now, don't get me wrong, bulking has its place. I've done big periods of bulking to maximize strength and maximize muscle growth. And quite frankly, I don't think I'd be in the position I am in my body if I didn't bulk through certain periods. But if you're going to bulk, you need to come to accept the fact that you're probably going to put on a bit of fat, which a lot of people don't want to do, which is why it's important for you to realize that it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, it's completely possible to build muscle without being in a large surplus or even being in a surplus at all. And this is because muscle tissue and fat tissue are completely different systems. So if you do hear someone say, I want to burn muscle, into fat, then please look them directly in the eye and say, don't be a dick. So let's move on to who's going to be best to recomp. And the first group of people is going to be newbie lifters. And this is because you are in literally the best position you're ever going to be to build muscle. Like there's definitely some days that I wish I was back being a newbie lifter again, where I literally just have to lift the weight and I would get stronger. And this also tends to mean you're in the privileged position of where you can actually use your body fat stores to help fuel muscle growth. Now, the next group of people are overweight or obese individuals. Due to having excess of body fat tissue, you're going to have plenty of energy to be able to fuel the muscle building process. So instead of looking at your situation like such a negative, if you flip it, you're actually in a pretty great position in order to build muscle. The other group of people are the people that have trained before or the detrained individuals. You know, they've had a break from training, life's got in the way, so on and so forth. Or maybe just like me over a year ago, they had some surgeries and they haven't been able to train. So so all of a sudden when they come back to training, the muscle memory effect kicks in and all of a sudden they start building muscle again and you'll probably find it tends to get a little bit leaner as well. Now the next group of people are the people who are injecting testosterone into their butt cheeks or taking any form of performance enhancing drugs because most PEDs or testosterone tend to enhance your body's ability to use its body fat stores in order to fuel the muscle building process, which is why when you take some form of performance enhancing drugs, or testosterone or steroids, you tend to be able to not only build more muscle, but also maintain a leaner physique. Now, the final group of people is one that a lot of people think they're not in, but actually a lot of people are in. And that's the suboptimal trainer. That's right, the person who thinks they're training really well, but actually they're not really at all. Which is why when an individual then gets a coach like myself, who provides them with a good program, shows them how to correctly perform exercises and make sure that they are progressively overloaded in the gym with some good nutrition, they all of a sudden tend to recomp and start to build a bit more muscle and get a leaner physique. Now, most people tend to fit into them five different categories. The only people that don't are the people who are already training optimally and are very experienced. Your high level bodybuilders, your athletes, and yeah, they're probably near to their genetic potential unless they're enhancing like we talked about. Now, I've trained for over 12 years and I still think that I could potentially do a bit of recomp, but as I said, the more experience you get, the slower the progress is going to become. But I still think I could grind out a little bit of recomp. So let's say I did want to do a bit of recomp. How would I do it? Well, the first thing you need to realize is that training is the driving force and the number one tool to change your body composition. Because you could literally have the best diet in the world. But if you're not training, you're not going to be building muscle and you're not going to be changing your body composition that much. A great analogy used for this is looking at yourself like a car. And imagine that you're engine is your training and the fuel you put in your car is your nutrition. You see, you could put in all the best fuel you want, but if your car doesn't have an engine, it's not really going anywhere. And if you wanted to take that analogy further, you could also say that recovery, sleep and hydration are really important as well. And you could categorize them as maybe your tune-ups and making sure your car's got enough oil. This means you need to have a training program that focuses on progressively overloading that you're training intensely with good technique. I would also make sure that program has a good amount of volume for you and a program that you can be consistent to. So let's say you're a beginner. Ideally, you would start going to the gym like three days a week and you probably want to be doing around 10 sets on each body part. Now, as you're getting more advanced, you may look to go four or five days, which means you may look to move towards doing 20 sets on each body part 
per week. And by the way, if you are struggling to find a program, don't worry, I'm bringing out my own over the next few months. So make sure you keep an eye on the channel and be ready for when I launch them. Now, the second step to recomp is figuring out your goal and figuring out what's the main priority. Is it building muscle or is it losing fat? Now, I always find with the people who haven't really trained before, they probably want to look to lose fat first. With the people who are already pretty slim or pretty lean, they're probably gonna want to build muscle. Or maybe you're just that person who's actually dieted for quite a while and now you really just want to basically maintain your results, but at the same time, make sure you still make a progression in the gym. So then once you've figured out what your main goal is, you then need to find your maintenance calories. And I'm gonna leave a link down below to the total daily energy expenditure calculator, which is gonna help you find it. Because once you've then found your rough number from the calculator, if you wanna build muscle, you're probably gonna to want to add sort of five to 20% to that number. If you wanna lose fat, you might take 10 to 20% off that number. But what you wanna just make sure is that you are around your maintenance calories on average seven days a week. Once you've figured out your calorie target, you're then gonna move on to figuring out your most important macronutrient, protein. For this, you want between 1.5 to 2.5 grams per kilo of body weight. So at the moment, I'm around 99 kilos. If I times that by 2.5, which would be 247.5. So let's round up and say 250 grams of protein for me per day. The lower your body fat, the more protein you're gonna need, the higher on that scale you wanna be. The higher your body fat, the less protein you're gonna need, and more you can be further down that scale. Otherwise, 150 kilo Jeff is gonna need like 400 grams of protein. And that's just unrealistic and unnecessary. And before people do get worried, that that's a really high protein amount, don't worry, you can't consume too much protein. Because if you do, your body just breaks it down into glucose and it's used as energy. This is called gluconeogenesis. I know, fancy name, right? So too much protein is always better than too little protein when it comes to body recomp and muscle growth. Now the rest of your calories wanna be made up from carbs and fats, which are your other two macronutrients. Now as fats are an essential macronutrient, you want them to be around 20% of your calorie intake. You then want the rest of your calories to be made up of carbohydrates, as this is gonna really help you perform well in the gym and obviously help the muscle building process. Now this next one might be more specific to the people who wanna lose fat, but equally to the people who want to build muscle, moving regularly is really great for recovery and boosting blood flow and just great for overall health. And of course, for the people who want to lose fat, it's going to help make sure you're expending more energy throughout the day and is really going to help you with that energy balance equation. So if you really struggle to move enough throughout the day, get yourself a fitness tracker, set yourself a step target. No, it doesn't have to be 10,000. Just make sure it's more than what you are normally doing. Because one of the best ways to maintain a lean physique is being an active person. Surprise, surprise. Now, my final point is optimize. And to be honest, you can body recomp literally from all of the previous six things I've just said. But if you're struggling in the gym and maybe struggling with the previous things that I've said, get yourself a good coach like me, who's really gonna help you optimize these things. And also make sure you optimize your lifestyle, which means make sure you're getting enough sleep, make sure you're getting enough recovery, make sure you're managing your stress, make sure you're drinking enough water because all these little little things play massively into the end goal and making sure, like we said with number one, you are performing well in the gym to help you get the results that you want. And also, if I said optimize to a lot of people, they're probably also thinking, what supplements can I take? Now, the two that I would recommend would be simply a protein supplement, whether it's a vegan protein made out of pea protein or rice protein, or a whey protein made out of whey, you know, filtered milk. This is just gonna make it convenient and a lot easier to get your protein intake up. And paired with that, I'd probably recommend creatine as well. Now, this is literally the most researched supplement on the market. Due to the fact it's got very limited side effects and it literally helps you get stronger, you might want to start taking three to five grams a day of creatine monohydrate with your shake as, yeah, it's going to help you progressively overload and definitely help you with the muscle building process. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you whack it a like to let everyone else know how good it is. And please remember, don't be a dick.